Number 66. Draw all possible resonance structures for each of these compounds. Determine the formal charge on each atom in each of the resonance structures. And then we have A through D. So, good news, guys. We've actually done all four of these in previous questions as far as drawing the resonance structures. So, if you want to know how to actually draw these, if you haven't done the questions already, go back to those. They start on question number 55 in this chapter. So um, if you're on the playlist, you could just scroll back and uh, start with number 50 find and fi find these. So I'm going to just run through these quickly with you because we've already done them. But for A, O3, we have to draw the resonance structure. So I'm going to draw one of them. And this is with three oxygens linked together like a chain. So we have O bound with O bound with another O. And then I'm going to draw the resonance. So this one will be like this. And this one will be like this. So this is the Lewis structure for it. And now I will actually, we just need one more lone pair here. And now I'm going to draw the resonance. And all that resonance is, remember, is you're just um, redistributing the electrons. So you're just basically distributing the electrons differently. And you do these with the same atoms. So for example, this central oxygen has two oxygens surrounding it, and one has a double bond, and the other one has a single bond. So what made to say that I could have swapped these, right? One went to one side, the other one goes on the other side. That's what resonance is all about. So I am going to bracket this off, and then arrow to show that I have my other resonance structure, and in which I'm just going to throw the single bond here and the double bond on this side. And then following the octet rule, uh, they need the eight electrons. So just fill in your lone pairs accordingly. And that's the two resonance structures for O3. Now let's get down to it. We need to follow the formal charge, right? Or we need to find the formal charge for each atom they want. Great. <laughs> so... Remember, formal charge comes from basically two things. The first thing you need to know is you need to know how to draw these Lewis structures. So I'm sure that you guys know how to do them by now, right? We're on question 66. Lewis structures starts at, I think, about question 40. So if you just feel not strong enough, that's okay. Just go back to number 40. I'll be there for you guys. And then the second thing is we're going to do the formal charge formula, which I have provided right down here. So we have to do it for each atom. So let's start from left to right. Let's start with this oxygen. Now the formal charge formula is only for atoms. It's not for the entire molecule. So you only look at one atom at a time. And what the formal charge formula is, is valence electrons of that atom minus the number of bonds it has minus the number of dots. As simple as that. So for this oxygen, this formal charge for that oxygen, you start with valence electrons. Oxygen has six valence. That's on the periodic table. So it would be six minus number of bonds. How many bonds does this oxygen have? It has two bonds. So that's minus two minus how many dots it has. And the dots represents the lone electrons. So for here, it actually has one, two, three, four dots. So it'd be minus four. So 6 minus 2 minus 4 is 0. So the formal charge for this oxygen is 0. There's no charge there. Now, um, we could either do the formal charge formula all the time, or we could make generalizations. And I promise you, if you make these generalizations, they will help you out in the end with speed and not spending too much time on formal charge for your quizzes and exams. So I'm going to say that any time that you see an oxygen have two double bonds, and two lone pairs or four electrons. That, uh, that oxygen will always be, or will always have a formal charge of zero. It will always be neutral. Oxygen wants to have two bonds, two lone pairs, all right? Now, just know that it could be seen in a different way. It just has to be two bonds, two lone pairs. So maybe I can have something like that. You see how it's exactly the same? two bonds, one right here, one right here, and then the two lone pairs. 
So these two representations, 1 and 2, they both would have a formal charge of 0. Next, we have this oxygen, right? This guy right here. Let's do the formal charge for this one. Now, I can't say that it's neutral because this one has three bonds, one, two, three. So it's not the same. It's going to be different, but then we can generalize it. So this oxygen, formal charge of this oxygen will be valence, which would be six from the periodic table, minus the number of bonds. We just said that was three, minus how many dots? One, two. So minus two. Oop. And 6 minus 3 minus 2 is a plus 1 charge. So that means that this oxygen has a positive 1. So it's not as neutral as the other one. It's going to have a partial positive, well, a plus 1 charge. So I'm going to put that over here. So anytime that you see oxygen with three bonds, one lone pair, that will always have a formal charge of a plus 1. All right, so it will be positive. I'll put an arrow here. Okay, last one is this one, this oxygen right here. It's different from the other two because it has um, a single bond. So let's just do it quickly. Formal charge for that oxygen is valence is six minus, there's only one bond for that oxygen. So that's one minus how many dots? One, two, three, four, five, six. So minus six, and that gives you a negative one. So this would have a negative one charge. So it's not neutral, it has a negative one. And I'm going to put over here that any oxygen with only one bond and three lone pairs or six electrons will always be a negative one charge. All right, so those are your generalizations that you should know. They will never change for oxygen. So oxygen with two bonds, one, two, or one, two, will have a formal charge of zero. Three bonds, one, two, three, will always have a formal charge of plus one. And then one bond will always have a formal charge of negative one. So we already know the charges for this guy. The one on the left would be a negative one. The one in the middle would be a plus one. And the one on the end would be neutral. There you go. Now, you could always just double check because your overall charges should always equal the charge in the upper right-hand corner. There was none here, which means that this whole compound should be neutral, and it is. There's a plus one and a negative one, and if we add those two together, plus one minus one is zero. So we did it right. So A is done. B, SO2. Now SO2 has three resin structures. We did this one in the past. If you want to go find a more in-depth version, I'm just going to put it over here. We have the two oxygens in the middle, oh, sorry, the two oxygens at the end and the sulfur in the middle, this would be one of them, and these would have two lone pairs. So that is one um, resonance structure. And then this would be, I believe like that. This one would still have the two, and this one would have three. And then last but not least, you just flip the double bond. So this double bond can go here, and the single bond can go on the other side. And those would be your three, whoop, oxygen over here, double bond, S, single bond, O, lone pair. This ha now has the two lone pairs because of the octet rule, and two lone pairs here because of the octet rule. And that's it. Now just know, going back to this one, this has more than eight electrons, two, four, six, eight, um, 10. But that's okay because sulfur is below uh, period two, which means it can have an expanded octet. All right, so let's run through the oxygens because now we have our general trends, right? We know these. So this oxygen has two bonds and we know that two bonds right here has a formal charge of zero. So I'm not even going to worry about doing the formula. You guys can if you want to, to just double check, but I know because of that generalization that this would have a formal charge of, this oxygen would have a formal charge of zero. And so with this oxygen, right? This one also has two bonds. Two bond oxygen is always going to have a formal charge of zero. And the same thing with this oxygen. Two bonds, 
So formal charge of zero. Of oxygen is zero. Same thing with this one, right? It has the two bonds. So formal charge of this oxygen is zero. Okay, now let's do the sulfurs and then we will finish up with the other oxygens. This sulfur, let's see, formal charge of the sulfur is valence. Sulfur has six valence electrons, so six minus number of bonds, this sulfur has one, two, three, four bonds. So six minus four minus the number of dots, one, two. So minus two, six minus four minus two is zero. So this has to be neutral or have a formal charge of zero. So anytime that sulfur has four bonds and two electrons, it will be neutral every single time. Let's do this one now because this one's different. This one has only three bonds. So formal charge of sulfur is valence, which we said was six before, minus three bonds, minus two dots. Six minus three minus two is a plus one. So this sulfur has a formal charge of a plus one. So there will be a plus one in the upper right hand corner. Okay, and it looks like this sulfur is exactly the same as this sulfur. So we know that this would also have a plus one as its formal charge. Now going back to what we know about oxygen, this oxygen has one bond and oxygen with one bond will always be a negative one charge. That's its formal charge. So this one would be a negative one charge and this oxygen also has the one. So this will also have a negative one as its formal charge. And there was no charge in the upper right hand corner, which means that if I took the charges, let's just say of the middle one, they should equal to zero. Negative one plus positive one is zero. So we did it right. And B is done. Moving on. Now I'm going to erase some of this. So if you need it, pause the video, but I'm going to start erasing. Whee. So hopefully this is making sense. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. I'm just going to circle some of this. Actually, let me, let me just get rid of it like this. Okay. So for C, NO2 minus, we already did this resident structure. This one has, and this is a negative one, right? This one has only two resonance structures. So I will put it down here. We will just say that this has a single bond to one oxygen and a double bond to the other. Like that. And then we have this. And now it has a charge. So I have to put that in the upper right hand corner. And now let's do the other resonance structure. I put the double bond on this oxygen but I could have put the double bond on this oxygen, right? So all I'm going to do is just switch them up. So we have oxygen, single, and double now. This now gets two lone pairs. This has this, and this has the three lone pairs. And it has a charge, so I gotta put that in the upper right-hand corner. And there we go. Now we know the oxygens, right? Can you guys tell what the charges would be? this oxygen would be neutral because it has the two bonds. So I'm just going to put formal charge of this oxygen is neutral, zero. This oxygen has only the one bond and the one bond has a negative one charge. So this has a, we'll say F formal charge of this oxygen is negative one. There should be a negative one in the upper right hand corner of that. And the same thing with the other ones. This has one bond with this oxygen, so it would be a negative one formal charge. And this oxygen has the two bonds, so this one would be zero. Now let's find out what the charges for the nitrogens are. Now they look exactly the same because they both have three bonds, one, two, three, and two dots. So whatever the formal charges of one of them, I know what the other one is. So let's just do this one, right? Actually, let me put the arrow over here. So formal charge of this nitrogen is 
valence electrons, nitrogen has five. So five minus number of bonds. So one, whoop, one, two, three. Minus number of dots, one, two. So minus two electrons or two dots. Five minus three minus two is zero. So this is a neutral atom of zero. And also know that one as your generalization. You'll see nitrogen having three bonds a lot of times. So just know that when you see nitrogen with three bonds and two electrons or one lone pair, that will have a formal charge of zero. It will be a neutral atom. Nitrogen wants to look like this. It wants to have the three bonds, two lone electrons. And the same thing goes for this one. So this would also have a formal charge of zero. And the whole molecule should have a negative one charge. So on the one on the left, it's this oxygen who has the negative one that gives us the negative one. And on this compound, it's this oxygen that has the negative one that gives us the negative one. So it makes sense. D, last but not least, nitrate. So that's NO3 minus, that's a polyatomic ion. And so is C, C is nitrite. So for D, let's write out the resonance. So now in this case we have, let's see if I could draw it, we have three oxygens. So I'll put the N in the middle and I'll put the O down below here. So we have one single, we'll put the double over here and then we'll put the single down here. I'm just kind of running out of room and that's that. Now I put the, I'm just going to bracket this off and say that it's a negative one. Now I put the double bond to this oxygen, but I have to play fair, right? Because they're all oxygens. So I can put the double bond here and I could put another structure here with the double bond, giving me three distinct resonance structures. So we'll have the double bond down here in the next one. And that means that this one will have the single bond. Bracket it off negative one. And then the last one, we'll put the double bond on the left-hand side. And with those lone pairs, six around this oxygen and two around these. Bracket it off negative one. Okay, so now let's see. We probably will know all the charges for the oxygens because we have this uh, standard that we're going based off of, right? So this oxygen has one bond. One bonded oxygens always have a formal charge of negative one. So this, I will put a negative one up top here. And this one is also the same thing. So this also has a negative one. And this oxygen has the two bonds and two bonds, whether you see it like this or like this, will always have a formal charge of being neutral, so zero. So this would have a zero charge, it would be nothing. So I'll just put over here, FC, this oxygen is zero. Work your way around, this oxygen has one bond, so that is a negative one formal charge. This oxygen has the two bonds, so that's neutral. So I'll just say FC of this oxygen is zero. And then this oxygen has the one bond again, so that is a negative one. This oxygen has the two bonds, so that's neutral. So I'll just put FC formal charge of oxygen is zero. But then these two both have the single bonds, so that's going to be a negative one for this one and a negative one for this one. Now we have to work with the nitrogens, but each nitrogen, this one, this one, and this one, they all have four bonds, if you've noticed. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And they all have no lone pairs. So if we know the formal charge for one of them, we will know it for the other two. So let's do the one all the way on the left. Formal charge of nitrogen equals, nitrogen has five valence electrons. So five minus number of bonds, which we just said before was four, minus, 
How many lone pairs does this one have, or how many dots does it have? There's no dots here, right? So that's minus zero. So this would be a plus one charge. So this nitrogen would be a plus one, and this nitrogen would be a plus one, and so would this one. So also know that as well. Nitrogen with three bonds, two electrons has a formal charge of zero. Nitrogen with four bonds always has a formal charge of a plus one. They will never change. Okay. And just for the check, right, they tell us that our nitrate ion is a negative one charge. So if we add up all the charges of the compound, it should come out to negative one. Negative one plus positive one plus a negative one is a negative one. So it works out. And that is the end for D. So that takes care of all of 66. Hopefully this helped, guys. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Basically, it all stems down from knowing your Lewis structures. But if you guys can do that, you can do resonance. You can do formal charges. And I think we're going to be doing hybridizations next chapter. So you could definitely do those and know your geometries. So Lewis structures are super important. All right. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for staying all the way to the end. Um, have an awesome day. Keep studying hard. You guys got this. I'll see you guys all in the next question. Bye-bye.